Welcome to the Showcase Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a simple Showcase application. Before we jump into the editor, let's quickly review the key elements of a Showcase application. The first part is the structure, and this is where we will display the assets and put the control widgets in that control how those assets will behave once they're in the display area. The theme is where we can set default settings for each of the widgets. This is a good place to set settings that will control the whole display area. Every individual asset you use, whether that's a video, an image, or a web browser, can all be controlled directly and independently in the structure. However, if you're happy for everything to look and feel the same, you can set it one time in the theme, and that will work for everything. We won't be using a service set in this example. We'll cover that in a later tutorial. The service set is a requirement if you want to attach an email service to the application or if you want to turn on data gathering. So let's jump into the editor and create our first application. So here we are in the showcase editor. One thing to check straight away is up here. Is the showcase client actually connected? If for some reason the showcase application wasn't running, you'd get a warning sign here to let you know that if you do create something and save changes, it's not actually going anywhere live. This is probably the first screen you will see when you start up the editor. It simply shows you the applications that are available and which one is currently running on the system. We want to go to the app launcher screen. So over on the left hand side in the menu area, I select App Launcher, which takes me into this window. What you can see here are the list of applications that have been defined. And then as we just looked at, the structure, the theme, and where necessary, a service set has been defined. So let's create our first application. I'm going to call this one the Tutorial App. and create new. There, that's pretty straightforward. However, what I also need is a structure and a theme. So let's head over to structures. These are all the structures that have been defined for the applications that are running. Note, you could use an existing structure for the application that you're defining if nothing's changing, or if you only want to make small changes to it. That's also true for the theme. If you have a theme that's been set that's a standard for the way that, for example, you want all your images to be handled, you could use a common theme. In this example, I'm going to create a fresh structure and a fresh theme because I'll be building on those in later tutorials. So, tutorial app structure. Let's create that. And you can see here straight away that we get those four elements that we talked about in the overview. So my background, the main, where we put the main control widgets and assets, the menu, this is the finger menu system, and then the overlay. So an effect that I want to put on top of the application. Now let's go create a theme. So tutorial app theme. And let's create that. Now these are all of the widgets that are available to us in the application. These all come supplied as standard. We only will use some of these very basic ones. Over here on the right hand side, this is a handy index area that when you click on the widget that you're interested in, it will drop you straight into it. For example, one of the ones that we will use in this application is the image viewer and that drops us straight into all the settings that are available for this particular widget. Don't worry about that right now. We'll deal with that in a little bit. Let's go back to the app launcher. Okay, here's my tutorial app. Let's go ahead and edit it. And it gives me now the option to select my structure. So here's my tutorial app structure that we created and my tutorial app theme. Now note, I'm not going to set a service set right now. 
I'm not using this application to connect to email, and I'm not worried about gathering statistics. We'll cover those in later tutorials. So let's go ahead and save that. OK, now I can run my application. So let's go ahead and click the run. Now, let's head over to the showcase application and see how this looks. So, congratulations. And no, this is not a mistake. It does look like this. Because right now, what we've done is created an application that has nothing in it. So all you can see is a gray screen. So before we finish this tutorial, let's quickly put a background on so that we're sure this is a running application and you can see all the detail. Let's go ahead and go back into the editor and put a background in. OK, so here I am back in the editor and you can see my running application is here. But to put a background on, if you recall, I need to go over to the structure. So let's go into the structure and pick the tutorial app structure. And as you can see, it's completely empty. We have nothing defined at all. So the first thing I want to do is put a background image onto the background. OK, so I head over to the media library. And here in the showcase tutorial, I have my background folder where I've placed a video file that I plan to use for the background. So I simply click and drag that over to the background and drop it in. Now, a couple of things has happened here. I've dragged an object from the media library into the background, but automatically the application has created a widget to view that asset. So let's turn the media library off and take a look at what we can see here. So these are the video viewer settings. It says, where am I going to put it on the display area? How big do you want me to make it? And I can set that by scale. So I could simply go 2x or 3x or 4x the original file size. Or I can set specific parameters as to how big I want this to be in pixels. I can maximize it immediately if I wanted to. I can name it. I can control how it looks. Notice down here in the source, this is the file that I just dragged from the media library and dropped in. You'll notice also that every setting down here is defaulting to using the theme. So remember what I said when we created the application. If you wanted to, you could set everything you want in the theme and not have to set anything here in the structure. Very often, though, when you create an application, you want your images and videos to be treated differently, depending on what part of the experience you're trying to control. So the theme's a great way of putting a standard put set of attributes in. But when you want to do something specific with an individual asset, setting it here in the structure is the right thing to do. Now, don't forget to save. Very important, because until you hit the Save button, it doesn't appear in the application. Now let's flick back to the application and see what's happened now that I've put my background in. OK, here's my background. Doesn't look quite right, does it? That's because right now everything's working off basic defaults, which means it's sticking to the original aspect ratio of the video and its original small size, which for the screen I'm trying to put it on, is quite small. So I have to tell the application how big I want this backdrop to be. And I need to make it big enough to fill the entire area. So let's go back into the editor and set the size attribute inside of that image viewer widget. Back in the editor, I'm looking at the video viewer for the background. And down here, you can see here's the initial size option. Now, I happen to know that the size of the display I'm working on is 1950 by 1200. That's in pixels. So once I set that and save it, I can go back to the application and check that I've filled the display because that's how I want that background to look. Ah, and here we are. I have this nice movie background now to build the rest of my application on. OK. That's it. We've created our first application with a movie background image. So let's quickly recap what we did. 
So we created a new application and we set the two of the three key components that we needed. We defined a structure, we looked at the four layers and in the background we dropped in a video asset and the application automatically put the right widget in for us and then we had to set the initial size to make sure it filled the whole display area. Remember, if you're building something for a large video wall where you may have multiple screens building up an entire touch surface, setting the size is going to be very important because you want that image to stretch across the entire surface to give it the best look. So you might have to experiment a little bit with those initial size parameters to get the pixels just right. The other thing to bear in mind is the application will always honor the original aspect ratio of the image you're putting on. So if you put a square image, for example, onto a very wide display, you're going to have to make that image as deep as it is wide in order to fill it, which means that some of the information or detail that you want in the image drops off the bottom of the display. That's not a problem because there's also a location parameter and you can move that image up or across to have it exactly where you want. So it's just something to bear in mind. If you're creating um, a video wall type application and it's very long and wide, then take a widescreen image as your background. That works really well in that scenario. The other thing we did was put a theme in. We didn't really have to touch that in this application, but the theme's there so that it provides the default settings for all of the display widgets. We overrode that in the structure though to set a specific size for this one. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial on how to create a showcase application. Thanks for watching. Thank you.